Hi, I'm Amanda Grandy. And I'm Eric Lepersky. And we're glad you decided to hang out with us today to talk about portable and home standby generators. Whether you're a newbie to Google Hangouts or you're an experienced pro, before we get started, we'd like to review some guidelines for our Google Hangout today. First, we will not be allowing any screen or video sharing during today's Google Hangout. So please use the chat feature to the right of the video to ask any questions. We'll answer them at the end of the session. Again, thanks for being here. We're glad you joined us. Let's get started. Amanda and I are from Briggs & Stratton. Now, many of you who've joined us are probably familiar with Briggs & Stratton as an engine company. As we're the world's largest producer of small, air-cooled, gasoline-powered engines for outdoor power equipment. But what many people may not know is that we're also a leading supplier of portable and home standby generators. Using our own brands such as Briggs & Stratton and our licensed brands such as Troybuilt for portable generators and GE for home standby. With over 6,700 employees worldwide, Briggs & Stratton uh, products are designed, manufactured, and marketed and serviced in over 100 countries on six continents. But enough about us. Let's get into today's topic, which is generators. There should be an agenda on your screen right now that uh, shows you what we're going to go through today. We're going to review some gen basic generator terminology. We'll talk about some differences between portable and home standby generators and why you should consider owning a generator. We'll also help you determine what size generator you need. And we'll go through some safe usage tips for all generators, such as carbon monoxide awareness. We'll wrap up with some maintenance and storage and take some questions from you at the end. All right, let's get started. First, some general generator terminology. A generator is a general name for a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. Basically, it's a portable or permanent power source of electricity for your home. We'll get into the differences about portable and permanent later. Next is a watt or a kilowatt. A watt is a unit of electri electrical power in which a generator's power output is measured. A thousand watts equals one kilowatt. Finally, amperage or amps are the strength or intensity of an electrical current. Generally, larger appliances require more watts and more amps to run effectively. Uh, now, portable generators have two types of wattage that they're used for rating. There's running watts, or how most generators are rated and are measured of amount of continuous power that generators provide to keep items running. Starting watts are the extra watts that are required for two or three seconds to start a motor-driven appliance, such as a refrigerator. The starting watts are the maximum wattage that any generator is capable of producing. Now let's move to uh, the differences between portables and home standby generators. Portable generators are not permanently installed and can be moved uh, around the home for more versatility versus a home standby generator which is permanently installed. Portables also require a little user interaction because when the power goes out, it requires the homeowner to go outside into their garage or maybe their storage area, pull the generator outside of their home a good distance away from the home, start the engine, and then run some electrical cords from their home out to the generator to provide electricity to the items that they want to power. Additionally, portables require refueling in a power outage of at least six hours or more. And finally, a portable generator can power only a few of the most critical items like a refrigerator, some pump, a TV, some lights, and some of your electronic devices, whereas many home standby generators can power nearly everything in your home. Now there's a newer type of portable generator called an inverter. An inverter is a computer-controlled uh, technology that helps a generator run at a quieter uh, speed, making them a lot better for things like picnics and tailgating or uh, tailgating at concerts or sporting events. A home standby generator is a permanently installed backup system for your home. So unlike a portable generator, it can't be moved around. It's installed outside of your home, runs on natural gas or liquid propane, and connects directly into your home's electrical system through a transfer switch. We'll talk about transfer switches in a minute, but also keep in mind that standby generators can power most of the items in your home. Now it is intended to be a hassle-free backup power solution since it automatically turns itself on when the utility power goes out. But then when the primary power goes back on, uh, it restores the, the power from the utility and the home standby system automatically shuts itself off. Oh, and one more thing to keep in mind, all home standby generators should be installed by an authorized Briggs & Stratton dealer or a licensed contractor. One last item to discuss is that transfer switch that you mentioned. Okay. A transfer switch is an electrical box, basically, that connects to your generator 
uh, and it connects your generator to your home and it transfers that power from the generator to your home's electrical system. There are two types of transfer switches. Uh, there's an automatic one which senses when the utility power is out and switches the generator on. Then it senses when your utility power has been restored and turns itself off. Most home generators come with an automatic transfer switch. Now, a manual transfer switch is basically just that. It's manual. It requires a homeowner to manually switch from the home's power uh, to their utility power or back and forth when the to the generator when the power goes out. Now, these can be wired to your home for use with either a portable or a home standby generator. All right. We're going to show you a video now about how home standby gener generators work to give you a little bit better idea about what we're talking about. And our trusty <laughs> assistant, Erica, will be bringing up that video just momentarily. Before we learn how the power management system works, it's important to first recognize that not all appliances and fixtures in your home are powered equally. While certain items like lighting, television, and many electrical appliances only require a steady amount of power to operate, some appliances also require an additional startup power or surge power to operate properly. The patented automatic transfer switch enables standby generator systems to effectively manage whole house power, including the rigorous demands of multiple AC units without fear of overload. Packaged whole house solutions include a standby generator and the patented 200 amp automatic transfer switch. Professionally installed to your home's electrical panel, the controls work in concert with the generator to efficiently manage the backup power demands of your entire home when the power goes out. Here's how it works. Permanently installed to your home's electrical panel, the whole house transfer switch continuously monitors your home's connection to the local utility house. When an outage occurs, the system senses it and starts your standby generator, automatically switching from utility power to backup power. The advanced computer controls then manage the demands of your whole house, including up to two central air conditioners for free and comfort while the power is out. When the system senses utility power is restored, it automatically transfers back to utility power, shuts down the generator, and continues monitoring until the next utility failure. Thanks to this key breakthrough in energy management technology, now you can enjoy the comfort of your whole house with more compact and fuel efficient and affordable standby generator. All right, so now we've talked about the difference between portables and home standby generators. Let's change gears and talk about why you might want to consider owning one of these generators. Did you know that on average a U.S. family will lose power five times this year? Or that an estimated three and a half million Americans experience power outages of some kind each week? Any homeowner who has experienced prolonged power outages or is in an area that gets frequent power outages may want to consider owning a generator. Roughly 85 percent of people purchase a generator primarily for home backup power when the power goes out due to storms, traffic accidents, and other general failures in the power grid. A generator can provide you with a, a sense of security, help protect your possessions, and keep your family comfortable and, very importantly, connected uh, during an outage. Since we are in a world that is so connected these days, no one wants to run out of cell phone power in the middle of any type of power outage. So we mentioned before that a growing number of people are also using inverter generators for things like camping and picnics. That way they can keep their cell phone power even out in the woods. So how do you figure out what size generator you need? When deciding what size generator you need, you'll want to first consider what you want to power during a power outage. You'll find out roughly how much the wattage of each of those items are that you want to power, add that up, and that'll give you a rough idea of what size generator you might want. Now for a home standby generator, you want to look at the total size of your home. This along with all the different items that you want to make sure that you power during a power outage will help you determine what size generator you need. But the Briggs & Stratton website has some really helpful tools that will aid you in deciding what size generator is right for you. The website shows what appliances and other electronic items you might be able to power with one of the Briggs & Stratton generators. And when selecting a generator, don't forget that the engine matters. The engine that powers your portable or home standby generator plays a pivotal role in product performance as well as your experience over the life of your generator. By choosing a Briggs & Stratton generator or a Briggs & Stratton engine on your generator, you can have the peace of mind that your engine is going to be easy to start, 
be powerful enough to drive all of the different electrical appliances you need, be durable, reliable, and be there for you when you need it most. All right, now let's talk a little bit about operating your generator safely. The first thing you should do with any piece of outdoor power equipment, including a generator, is to read your operator's manual. The key thing to remember is that every piece of outdoor power equipment emits carbon monoxide, a colorless, odorless, yet poisonous gas that could kill you in minutes. So you should always operate your generator outside of your home, far away from windows, doors, and vents to reduce the risk of carbon monoxide gas from accumulating and potentially being drawn towards that any occupied area of your home. You should always install carbon monoxide alarms with battery backups according to the manufacturer's recommendations. And never, ever run any generator inside a home, garage, basement, crawl space, or any other partially enclosed space, even if you're using fans or opening windows and doors for ventilation. Carbon monoxide can build up in these spaces and can linger for hours, even after the generator is shut off. So always place your generator downwind, away from your home, and point the exhaust away from any occupied space. And finally, if you ever start feeling dizzy, sick, or weak while operating your generator or any other outdoor power equipment, seek medical attention. You also you may have carbon monoxide poisoning. A generator can be a very useful tool if you follow these tips for safe generator operation. So let's briefly review a chart that provides an overview of these tips. Basically, you want to make sure that that generator that you have operating and powering some of the electrical things in your home is not positioned anywhere near or inside of your home. The chart that we have up on the screen should show that now, uh, and again, that generator should not be in any occupied space. All right, let's wrap up today by talking about maintenance and storage. For an extended power outage, you'll need to make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions for maintenance for your portable generator. This includes changing the oil after the first five hours of use, checking the oil every eight hours, and then changing the oil after every 50 hours. A good rule of thumb is if you're running your generator in an extended power outage and you're running it constantly to power your home, you're going to want to change that oil at the beginning of every third day of use. We often use an analogy to help people remember this. If you were to drive your car consistently for 50 hours, averaging 60 miles per hour, you'll exceed 3,000 miles, likely requiring an, order, an oil change. Generators require similar maintenance. Finally, check your owner's manual for all other maintenance, including checking and replacing the air cleaner, the fuel valve, the spark plug, and the muffler system for the manufacturer's recommendations. When you're ready to store your portable generator, there are a few things to remember to keep your generator ready for the next use. You're going to want to clean the generator as outlined in your operator's manual, and if there's any fuel left in the fuel tank, you'll make sure that that's fresh fuel uh, and it's treated with a Briggs & Stratton advanced fuel treatment. One question we often get, Eric, is can I keep my fuel in my generator well in storage? Sure. Yeah, the answer is yes. You can keep fresh fuel, and that, like stress that, fresh fuel in your generator. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's treated with a fuel treatment or fuel stabilizer, particularly the Briggs & Stratton fuel stabilizer, it'll be good for about three years. Now, today's gas can go stale when stored for just 30 days, so you want to make sure that it is treated. What stale fuel does is it develops an acid and leaves gum, de gum deposits uh, within the fuel system and essential carburetor parts basically clogging up the fuel system. So by using this advanced fuel treatment you can help minimize any buildup of these uh, deposits and keep your generator's fuel system ready for its next use. For home standby generators when it comes to maintenance and service we recommend that you work with an authorized Briggs & Stratton dealers. Many of those dealers offer annual maintenance and service contracts. But I'd like to talk to you about something new today that's coming out next month. It's our InfoHub wireless monitoring system that can help you with your service and maintenance needs. It provides instant updates on the status of your standby generator, and it can send you text message alerts uh, about preventative maintenance and this, if there's any service that your generator might need. Yeah, it's available on any web-enabled device, so ready for iPhones and Andro Android apps are out there for it. It records uh, generator usage and performance over time, and it's really easy to install. So now that we've kind of wrapped it up, we want to give you a little bit more uh, information on where you can find that. Yeah, so for portable generators, you can go to www.briggsandstratton.com, click on the portable generators uh, link tab under the uh, products tab on the home page. And for home standby generators, you can also go to www.briggsandstratton.com. 
and click on Standby Generators under the Products tab. We'll now take any additional questions you may have um, on anything that we've covered today. So if you have a question, please use the chat feature to type in your question. We'll hang around for the next uh, couple minutes waiting for any questions to come in. Uh, our trusty, uh, trusty assistant, Erica, is uh, here waiting with us. So if you have anything, just let us know now. But you know, Eric, something that people do ask us when we talk about this topic is, is a portable a good investment knowing that there's also a permanent standby option? So who might consider a portable versus a standby generator? Well, somebody who uh, really is only concerned about in infrequent power outages uh, may be, might be able to get by with a portable generator. Someone who is in an area where they do experience home standby, uh, frequent power outages certainly wants to consider a home standby. Great. And I think portable generators are also for people that might want to use it for something other than home backup. So, for example, if you need to use it on a job site or if you power some tools maybe out in your yard, you might want a portable uh, option as well. Or if you're like myself and you enjoy doing a little tailgating at sporting <laughs> events and concerts, you're going to want to check out the inverters uh, on our website. All right. Well, we'll check in with Erica again. I don't think there's any questions out there. Um, so we really appreciate anybody, everybody joining us today for our Google Hangout, and we hope you got some inform useful information about generators. Thanks much. See you soon.